Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you an insane attacking game played by English doctor Thomas Baudelaire. Baudelaire is known for publishing The Family Shakespeare, an expurgated edition of William Shakespeare's plays and in this game his opponent was British general and statesman Henry Seymour Conway. This game was played in 1788 in London and this was a casual game. Baudelaire was playing with the white pieces. Well, what is this pawn doing on e4? Let's move it back. The pawn was already hurrying to step forward, guys. Did you see that? And now, yes, without further ado, let's push forward to this e pawn and see what's going to happen next. By the way, I forgot to tell you that this game is considered to be the first recorded example of a double rook sacrifice. Conway responded with e5, bishop c4, we have the bishop's opening, bishop c5, d3, c6, queen e2. Well, in 1788, chess theory was not developed and we won't delve too deep into the analysis of the opening moves of the players. Nothing special, you know, already we have sidestepped the main modern theoretical lines. And in this position we have f4, we have something like delayed king's gambit, it takes f4, bishop takes f4 and queen b6, black is creating a double attack. Here white played queen f3, well queen f3 is dubious and what is interesting, according to the engine in here, the best continuation starts with bishop b3. It's important not to allow queen takes b2 and invite black to win the knight on g1 and now in case black captures on g1 then white can gain advantage though the position remains highly complex and i'm just relying on angie's analysis you know in here white can play knight c2 and yes the engine gives white a huge advantage but in our game after queen b6 we have queen f3 and now already bishop takes g1 is not good because of this bishop takes f7 check you can't capture on f7 because of this discover check and black will lose his queen and if king d8 then knight d2, if queen takes b2 then rook b1. Again, the engine gives white advantage but like in the previous variation I showed, the position remains highly complex. White is leading in development and despite the fact that white is a piece down, White has a ferocious attack and that's the trump card which gives white advantage. But in our game after queen f3 we have queen takes b2. Black actually chose the best continuation. Bishop takes f7 check. Again, king takes f7 is not good because black can lose his queen. That's why after bishop takes f7 check we have king d7. Now comes knight e2. White is inviting black to win that rook, after which we have king d2, bishop b4 check, knight c3, and after bishop takes c3 check, knight takes c3, black munched the second rook. Right now white is at two rooks down, but has a ferocious attack. Here we have queen g4 check, king c7, then queen takes g7, knight d7, black is covering the 7th rank, he's allowing queen takes h8, but despite the fact that queen takes h8 might seem tempting, in this case once white is losing the pawn on g2 and is allowing black to activate his queen, white can face serious problems, that's why after knight d7 we have queen g3, white decided to munch the pawn on d6, b6, meanwhile black is freeing the b7 square for his king and Another staggering sacrifice, knight b5 check. This is a critical moment where Henry Seymour Conway made a mistake and accepted the peace sacrifice. It turns out that c takes b5 is losing. The only line which allows black to maintain advantage starts with king b8. If knight takes d6 then a5, this time black is freeing the a7 square for his king, if bishop takes g8 then king a7, if queen g7 then rook takes g8, and then bishop b7, black is simply a rook up and has a winning position. But in our game, in the critical moment, general Conway made a mistake and killed the knight on b5, after which his king becomes an easy target for aggressive white bishops and queen. King b7, well if I move like king d8, then this time bishop c7 can be very unpleasant, followed by bishop h5 with a mate to follow very soon. In our game after bishop takes d6 check we have king b7 and bishop d5 check. Both bishops are simply harassing black king and by playing d4 
This time, Baudelaire is freeing the third rank for his queen to announce a checkmate. B4 was played, this time we have bishop takes B4. All the time, black is creating an escaping route for his king, but there is no way out. Here we have C4 check. White is also sacrificing his bishop. Honestly, guys, I have already forgot how many sacrifices we saw in this game. If one of you has counted all those sacrifices, please let us know about the number of sacrifices in the comment section in here we have queen b3 check and after king a5 finally on move 23 we have a checkmate on the board really really a very insane attack by thomas Butler, and this game is also sometimes called as a quaint precursor of the immortal game. White organized a very hasty attack but in the critical moment Conway failed to defend accurately, made a one wrong step and quickly lost the game. In the end, as usual, a chess puzzle for you where the task is to find the mating line for white. It's white to move and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you, feel free to check them out as well, I will see you in my next video, take care!